Today we've got what I expect to be a repair video. This is for demonstration purposes, a radio we bought in off eBay and it's the Midland 77 104 GTL. Now I have seen one once before and we always used to sell Midland sets but I don't remember the wholesaler ever having these. I know it's the same chassis as something else, but look, it's sellotape together, and it's got a bit of power lead and no mic. So we'll start by making up a mic and sorting out the power lead problem. We'll take it from there. Right. Well, going back onto this radio, we've now put a power lead on it. I've now done a microphone for it and we've switched it on let's turn it that way on so you can see it and it works in PA mode it's a bit quiet no display it's transmitting the channel changes no volume so we better see if we can find a circuit diagram now, looking at some layouts here, it looks like the Kerno Beta 1100. Some of you will see these every day, but I don't seem to see many of these models. So I've dug out my Beta 1100 info. I've got a circuit diagram here, and I'll study that, and we'll see why we don't think there's a channel display. Right, well, we've got the fault sorted out and we've now got a display back. So, I had a look at the circuit diagram and I felt, well, how's the display voltage fed? And there's a Zener diode and a capacitor. Slightly different layout to the um, Beta 1100 circuit that I'm looking at, but the same kind of thing. And I spotted that capacitor there and I thought well if that was short circuit it would remove the voltage rail so I took out the capacitor which is 10 volt rated and replaced it. it's 470 microfarads at 10 volts and well we stuck 470 at 35 volts so that's what's gone in so I'm not expecting that to ever fail again because this radio might have been over voltage at some point in its uh, career so I mean, it's well used, isn't it? So that's today's fault finding uh, task. Let's see if we can uh, do a tune up on it. So we'll start with the transmitter. I'm going to just check it transmits on, on all 40 channels. I don't know the VCO setup on this. Um, what we got? Uh, well, it's about there on channel 20. It's one of those sets that annoyingly starts off on channel 9 every time. Channel 1. Yep. Yeah. Channel 40, yeah. So it's clearly had somebody messing with the VCO at some time. That'll be the VCO coil. You'd monitor the lock detector somewhere on the C5121 synthesizer chip and uh, take it from there. Right, so we'll go through the uh, transmit lineup. Well, if it was the B3 1100, that would be T8, just there. Tell you what, we'll just zoom in a fraction. Right now, I've got 3 watts. Slight improvement with that one. L3. And L5. Uh, oh, it's got an RF power control, hasn't it, on this one? And that's there.
There we are, four watts spot on. It's capable of about four and a half. So that's uh, that does that bit. Now let's have a look at the uh, deviation. Deviation is the preset down there. In fact, we'll use a yellow tool so you can see that. With it not having a display or fairy lights, because there's no RF power, and it's got no requirement for high-low power like CB2781 has, because this is the later PR2794. So put the oscillator on, select the test set for FM deviation, press Yeah, quick whistle test. <whistles> Wallow. We we'll just need to up that a bit. It's about uh, one point five. <whistles> Wallow. That's fine. That's speaking at two point five with a whistle. Turn that oscillator off. Well, there's nothing more I can say about it. That's it. Fixed and um, and working. So I'll see you on the receive side of this radio.